I don't do litigation anymore. My employment agreement says in bold letters, a paragraph set off, that if I accept a case, it's for settlement purposes only, and that I will withdraw if the case goes to litigation. It doesn't matter to me whether the other side's a collaborative lawyer, a litigator, or who they are. I'm going to withdraw if the case goes to litigation. But 98% of all cases are already settling anyway, so I'm not really taking a big risk, and neither is my client to do that. But they thoroughly understand what my commitment to them is. And most clients say, that's fine. I don't want to litigate anyway. So we go forward on that basis. And even though the other side is a litigation lawyer, they've never heard of the collaborative process, I approach them as transparent as I possibly can be. I always do what I say I'm going to do, which amazes them. I call them back promptly. I don't write them nasty letters. If my client's at fault, I tell them. My client you know, we, we may not agree with everything in your original petition, but my client has liability here, and we would like to get this resolved as quickly as possible. Sim that simple admission sometimes causes people to just think that probably they're dealing with a mentally ill person on the other side. In one instance, this young lady refused to meet with me, and the partner in her firm had to meet with me because she was actually frightened of me because I wrote her back and told her that in fact my client did owe her client money and that we were willing to get together to set up some way to pay it back and she didn't know what to do because she thoroughly expected us to deny the whole thing. I will not represent someone who denies liability when they're liable. Uh, in another instance we got, my client got served with um, an original petition and a stack of discovery like this and I called the other side and I said we don't agree with everything you said and we're filing a general denial answer but the fact is that my client is liable and I've explained the liability uh, uh, to him under the law that he has in this instance and we'd like to get this settled and by the way I'm not answering your discovery because there's no point in it since he owes the money and there is liability there and we'd rather pay your client four or five thousand dollars than for him to pay me to answer discovery that's not going to make any difference anyway. And in that situation my client had a partner that had absconded and so my client was jointly and severally liable for the full amount of money owed. The um, plaintiff in that situation said they would hold him liable for only half due to the fact that he was so straightforward and it ended up that they accepted less than half of what was owed uh, in payment. So, and he had very very little to pay me in attorney fees because we, we didn't spend a lot of time fighting. So he was really happy. Uh, I think the other side was pretty happy because if they'd have gone to court they'd have spent a lot on attorney fees and had a judgment that they probably couldn't have collected anyway, at least not in Texas. So you can approach other people and have these kinds of things happen and then tell them the reason that this happened is because I believe in interest-based negotiation and collaborative law. Have you heard about that? And then you can explain it to them. So there's lots of people you can talk to about it and some of them say, well I had one lawyer tell me, I'm absolutely amazed. I've never had anybody act like this. I got a letter from the young lady that was afraid of me at the end when we got everything settled telling me that I was the nicest lawyer she'd ever had on the other side of a case. Never got a letter like that before. So there's, there's a lot of good things you can do to help start your practice going in the direction of the collaborative process. If I had to say what is the heart and soul of law, 
that would be a little bit difficult for me to answer because my heart and soul isn't in the law. My heart and soul is in a better resolution than is offered at law. To me, the law is default. The laws are made arbitrarily to handle a number of situations, and it has to be that way because obviously we've got all these people out there that have to have some sort of guidelines to follow. But if they voluntarily come together on their own, they can often come up with a better solution than is available to them at law and many solutions that are not even able to be achieved through the law. So the heart and soul of it to me is to allow people to come up with better resolutions that can put them in better positions, that can give them better satisfaction, that can help them to go on with their lives with the least amount of interruption. I think that that is probably the best thing that I, I can offer for my client. And certainly you have to advise your clients of the law. Um, when I was doing, and still, when I'm involved in a collaborative divorce, if somebody's, you know, giving away the farm, I tell them, under the law, you really don't have to give the other person all this that you're offering. It, it would not be required if you went to court, and they wouldn't get it if you went to court because this is beyond the guidelines that are set up for child support or spousal support or whatever under the law. So you advise them of that, but ultimately, if that's what they want to do, that's their life. That is up to them. Because I'm going to go on to another case. They're going to live with this decision for the year, uh, several years, however long this, this order is going to affect their life. It's not me, so it's not up to me to decide. Or, for that matter, I don't think it's up for the law to decide if they can decide to agree on something that suits them better.